to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. Here we are. It is Saturday night. We are tucked away in the war room somewhere in the high desert of southern Idaho. I am here today. I'm here with Mr. Dean. Dean is back. True. I'm here with Mr. Mark. Mark is here. We've got uh, <laughs> mesothelioma. I do, yeah. Spin a day on the range. Yeah, I've got that real sweet taste in my mouth. I don't know what you want. I don't yeah, I want to know what you did on the range. <laughs> 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 oh, crap. Okay, well, anyhow. See what everybody was missing? Dean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyhow. <laughs> Mr. Mark, Mr. Mark, he needed this. I'm telling what you, he did, needed what this. Have you been, what have you been up to, Mr. Mark? Good lord. Uh, <laughs> what have boy, you this started to? out good. This started out great. <laughs> You've been selling guns. Uh, or insert what? foot into mouth. That's oh. what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, selling a few guns. Uh, I don't know. What's popular yeah. going out the door now at DMB? Um, well, they're they're not. Besides necessarily the chicken feed. Not yeah, not necessarily going out the door so much. We're getting a lot of a lot of lookers. Um there's some new stuff out there. Um stuff that we've seen at Shot Show and you know, new things that are that they're coming out uh this year that they've kind of talked about, but we've already had them in the store for a little while. Um Rock Island has like a shotgun called a vr60 they also have a vr80 that the ar looking thing yeah they're kind of i mean they're kind of unique looking You're still they, selling a bunch yeah is it, is i it see like a magazine fed yeah critter? I, I see the draw to them i mean they're they are kind of neat looking and stuff i just um can i go duck hunting with it actually i believe you can whoa like yeah that's cool but i i don't know um it's not something i'm really into but i i get i get why people are drawn to it you know so do we got any? Actually, we'll come back to that. Um, what about you? It's been like freaking months. I know, dude. It's been months since we've seen you. Life happened, you know. Between you know, I got you know, I got a cold for like a month. And I got gotcha. you. Got out of town and and then got uh, you know the wife giving me honeydew lists and stuff. And we don't care what the I'm, wife says. Ah, uh, true, true. Anyway, yeah, it's Whoa. so good to be back. It's, <laughs> don't agree with them. It's uh, it's. <laughs> <laughs> But you're back, and we it's, actually we had people asking about you. Really, yeah, asking for for texting, Dean. Where's Dean been? We the want return to of I am, Mean Dean. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not kidding. They, My, they, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I tell you, you, this is so therapeutic to come and just talk guy stuff. We know. In the we're war room here. Yeah. We're it's awesome. A lot of our a lot of our listeners week. actually, you know, uh, I've had a few. Morgan, uh, who's one of our um, Morgan Yoakum. Yeah, he's one of our faithful listeners i think that's how you say it <laughs> um he came in and talked to me and he says i love i love your show um it's just like i'm hanging out with you know my friends we just bicker about stuff and have a good time go down a lot yeah. of rabbit trails so. right yeah oh it's so much fun to be yeah. here it's therapeutic honestly to, oh yeah after it's... spending a week with you know nine and ten and six year old and then the wife uh it's it's good yeah to come out and do guy stuff what about you todd True. What have I been up to? What have you been up I to? I have, I don't know, work's pretty slow, day job's pretty slow. Been working on, you know, not so exciting stuff necessarily. Not the, not the fun part of, of Patriot. The fun I, part is shooting. Yeah. Is going out and taking people shooting. But uh, phone's been ringing off the hook, so we had a huge class today. I've been running around trying to figure out new classes with the Sims rounds. Yeah. I'm um, trying to... There's get, a, something in the works, isn't there, like a... There is, there I've is. Seen, seen a little preview on I've seen, Facebook. Yeah, and I actually put a preview out on Instagram and Facebook. So we, I've developed, um, come up with an, I'm coming up with a new logo, not for Patriot Defense necessarily, but for the Patriot Defense podcast. And so your new logo does it involve your old logo just with some dog drool on it? It does. It does actually. <laughs> no, it it involves the it involves the, it's on his shirt. Yeah, so. it's all over my shirt. 
Um, it, it involves the old logo. It's got a gun in the middle, a microphone, and it's a Patriot Defense Podcast. Nice. And Does it have skulls and fire? It's, no. It needs skulls and fire. To, oh, wait. No, well, that's that's another podcast. No I don't more. ride motor- motorcycles. No, no, that's a motorcycle Mr. thing. Dean. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So this is, um, I'm having some shirts made up. And I got a couple different phrases on the back. You can go and check out the Facebook page. Check me out on Instagram. And you can see those. And uh, if they work out, I'll find next week, kind of finalize the design next week. Uh, I'm going to order a bunch of shirts. And I'm going to create a um, page on my website and sell them. Put them up for sale. And I'm not, what are you looking for? The information on, on telling the listeners yeah, where to find that. That's stuff. up there. It's up there. So you can go grab it. I'll keep talking. Okay. So I'm going to put this on my um, uh, my website so you can get down there and buy them. So I'm not going to have a bunch up there at first. We're going to see how well they sell. And then I just want to – I'm not char- I'm not trying to really make any money on here. I just want to kind of get the word out. So I'm just selling them. And anything that I do make on them, I'm just putting right back into ordering more. So you're having people pay for your advertising. Pretty much. That's the way it works. That's the way that's, it works. That's business 101 that's right business there. That's business 101 right yeah, there. That's why everyone's against Harley and, and Indian and all their high-priced shirts at each dealership. How makes much, how much that's are they going shirts. for victory now. Right. How much? <laughs> Which is done. <laughs> victory, <laughs> victory closed his doors oh, <laughs> last year. Oh. Yeah, they did. Darn it. So yeah. anyhow, but people, I think, will buy them. Yeah. And if not, I got their nice shirts and freaking I'll wear them all. Right. Don't matter to me. Yeah. So, so, you know, do you going to get like stickers made up and, and leave stickers all over and I might do some stickers at that, one point. Actually, we should just go like, you know, graffiti sticker, everything. Dude. Yeah, it's called guerrilla marketing. Oh, you know, you know that uh, that 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 motorcycle podcast I had you listen to about the guy who Did runs. They put stickers everywhere. They make stickers and they're everywhere. I mean, these guys take like trips across the United States and up to Canada and all that, and everywhere they're leaving stickers. Like they they uh, they do a lot of YouTube videos as well. Right. Nice. One of their videos, they stopped at a gas station for gas, and there was a car uh, or a truck there with all these peace signs all over the back. <laughs> they slap it on there. Slap there it, it on is. there. <laughs> Light there bulb. That would be kind of that would be kind of fun. Yeah. So, I mean, they like everywhere they go, like even the bars they go to, they'll leave stickers on the you know in there. Or whatever. They went through Fairfield here a couple years ago, and there's the sticker up in their bar up there. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, uh, that's an idea. Anyhow, any any way I can get the word out. So. Yeah, true. In fact, I may be making some more stickers up too because I uh, there's a listener he asked about maybe making stickers. Cool, I'm making some stickers up. So if any, anybody's interested in the shirts um, or any kind of future so, merchandise, yeah, it's maybe. not up yet, but it, yeah. it will be in the next week or two. Yeah, keep checking though, um, Patriot Defense One Three dot com. Um, yep. Hopefully, it'll be on there. Yep. Check it out, um, and um, we are actually having a contest right now. Not a contest, excuse me. We are prepping for a future show. Yes. And we've got one question. So one question called in. So what it is is uh, we're all going to be sitting around. If Dean can make it, great. Um, but it'll be me and Mark and uh, Mr. Tarver, hopefully. And it's, it's, it's call in, leave us a message, text me, email us, email in a question. You can ask us anything. It could be gun-related. It could be about... What is Kevin's middle name? I don't care what it is. We, How to get your wife out shooting with you? Yeah, we will answer. We will answer that for you. <laughs> How um, to stash your money away to uh, buy a gun without your wife knowing? Perfect. True. Yeah. You True. can do it. Just be a man. Grab your. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyhow, that's what we're gonna do. So all the contact info for that is what? What's our call number? Mr. Uh, so Mark? the contact info for that. If you want to call in with a question. You're just going to have to call it in and leave a message. Uh, we will definitely get it. Um, it is uh, 1-208-696-4397. Uh, if you want to email in, um, which is probably the easiest for a question, um, just do the Patriot Defense 1-3 at yahoo.com. Um, if you want to text in, text you, in. Can, you can call me even, but I for text you know. message. Uh, area code 620-794-6223. That's area code 620-794-6223. I get text messages from all kinds of listeners, so don't be shy. Call, Text me, ask me a question, say hi, and maybe I'll, I'll shoot the breeze with you for a while. I, I tend to do that. So I got a couple guys that I've never even met. They listen to the podcast, um, and they're back east, and they text me all the time. I chat with them all the time. Send them some stickers. I might have to. I got to get some made up though. Yeah. So I will say this. I I, I don't know why I was thinking about this. Is it's probably about the when you said challenge thing earlier. Um, 
one of the guys I work with at the gun counter, yeah, Dan, mm-hmm. got a new gun this this last week. Oh yes, and I am in love with that gun. Yes, um, and it's a gun that I've Freaking. seen. I've seen it, you know, but uh, he's he's done a few upgrades to it. You know, Wilson yeah. Combat. Don't leave stuff. us in suspense, Mark. Come on, what is it? All right, all right. Oh, I got to play it? with it too. The other day, it is uh, Beretta <laughs> M9A3. Huh? Yeah. No, I know. I I know. I see the look on your face. It and is I know. pretty slick. It is. It is slick. Amazingly, it is slick. slick. The he's upgraded the the springs, like the recoil spring, the hammer spring. He's upgraded them all. Does it look like their traditional model ninety two with? It's, yeah, it's, it's not got black. the resemblance, but it's the tan. You know. It, I, okay, hear me out. I'm not the biggest Beretta fan. I've shot them. I never shot them very good. Um, but this thing. I'm in love with it. So we are going to actually, what are we going to do with that? So Dan has actually kind of challenged me uh, to a shoot off. And I invited myself. But he, <laughs> he's, he's not saying, you know, me versus him. He's saying his gun versus one of my guns. Um, so I don't know. We're going to maybe do like three of us. I'll shoot it. And uh, see, you know, which one just groups the best to, you know. I want to put, that's going to be real subject. It's going to depend on who's shooting it, too. That's, well, that's true. And that's, but that's why you get three different people to shoot it. Oh, okay. Then you kind of get an idea. So why don't I, why don't I throw in my, one of mine? Do it. Dude, you're just going to have a glorified pissing contest. That's all Pretty you're going to do. I mean, because we're all going to shoot the same isn't gun. Isn't that kind of what the podcast you're go is? Go to the bathroom and play swords, too. Uh, we, if we were younger, but no. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that what the podcast is? It's just a glorified pissing contest. I think I think that if we all three I think that if we if there's three True. of us and there's three guns and we all shoot the you know, all three guns and Wait, you know, wait, what's this thing called again? This Beretta? M nine A three. Okay. So it, I, I think we it's gonna be more, you know And we have another challenge on the table too. Yes we do. And what is the challenge? Th- this is the D B nine challenge is the what D- I'm calling it. Um Todd you know, he said that he's going to... I can shoot guns. Todd says that he can shoot this DB9. Tarver, I don't think Tarver is... He's seen me shoot exactly, it twice. Uh, he's, confident in you. He's not on that one. He is not. I'm not either. So I challenged Todd to shoot the DB9. Five-shot group, golf ball size. So, <laughs> which is going to be difficult. So At teaching distance. So So here's the thing. I'm no stranger to shooting handgun. I can shoot a handgun. You've seen me shoot a handgun. Yes. I've shot this twice, and it's 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 a little challenging. This little DB9, this little piece the of little crap. diamondback nine millimeter, a little piece concealed of carry. garbage. It's literally this big. It's tiny. It, does it look like an SCCY? No, no. It's, it's way smaller. It's better, smaller, <laughs> and better. Even though it's worse, it's better, but it's worse. I don't know. It's weird. It's better put together, but it's worse to shoot. It, huh? It is. It is hard to shoot. It hurts. Yeah. Anyhow, we're is, gonna. Is that an American company, the Diamondback Company? Yeah. It has that, to okay. Be. Okay. So anyhow, that's a couple of the challenges that we've got laid out on the table. Mister yeah. Mark, and we will though when we do these, we will we will record them. Yeah. And we will post. Maybe we'll do it live. Dude, this this M nine A three looks just like the any old Model ninety two, but it it's does. got a threaded barrel it does. with a. You know, barrel, yeah. in that, uh, it's got a little lanyard attachment deal, but Dan's, being a bottle opener. Dan's changed out the lanyard attachment. He put kind of like a a regular a ramp that helps you, you know, when you're loading your magazine, um, kind of helps feed had, the mag into. We had it. to fix that. Yeah, <laughs> but so, I mean, no, the gun is, itself, is the trigger better than a regular ninety two? Is it more? I like it. It's, it's double action mode. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, smooth. Huh. But it's a good trigger. I don't I know. Want to almost, the, I almost want to slip the word Smith in there. It's a good trigger. That I don't good, know. Huh? I don't know if I um I didn't get an opportunity to try it. Well, I did. I, Holy I did. Balls. This thing's eleven hundred dollars. Yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I did try it, you know, before he changed the springs and everything out. And I, I can tell a difference. The Wilson Combat spring combination was Was it lighter? It's yeah, I think it goes from a sixteen to fourteen or something like that on the. On, uh-huh. I think that was the on the double spring. action, uh, for the spring like the pound the pounds yeah. So what's the actual trigger pull? Do you know I any idea? Huh. Well, single or double. I mean, double is probably 
10, 10 to 12, maybe 13, yeah, maybe 11 know. to it's 13. Not it's, 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 yeah. it's not bad. It's, it's, it's not bad though. It's a good more lower self end, defense like 10, yeah. type. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to see if Beretta comes out bit. on top. Yeah. So basically that's what we're, we're seeing if the, what you, what wait, you said, wait, $1,100. You need, to come $1, and bring $1, your, you need to come and bring your Kimber. Let's say yeah. $1,100 Beretta versus I'm going to put my Canic into oh, it. God. $300 I'm going to put my $300 TP9 Canic up against an $1,100 Beretta. And you're going to shoot the DB9? No. No. It's that's, a separate, that's, that's a separate, separate challenge. challenge. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. I was, I was uh, lost Todd wants to bring here. the gun into the mix. I say, why not? Let's I may get bring, I may bring. I may bring my, my XDM. What about your VP? Don't you shoot that VP? I do. I shoot the XDM really good. a lot better. I was going to say, let's, just, let's get like a mid-range one. Yeah. You know, we'll have the, the cheap one, mid-range, and then the, the expensive one. There you go. Let's do it. So. We'll get a hold of you. You can bring your Kimber. Is that fair? Yeah, well, yeah, it's you know, plenty with, fair. You know, the with you know the it's plenty fair. The I'm round worried. that was, you know, handed by God to Adam. Oh, and, yeah, I'm not worried about it. Not worried about that at all. <laughs> and then the handgun that was forged by Moses himself, brought down <laughs> yeah. off Mount it's Sinai. It's plenty fair. It's plenty fair. And then you got this Beretta that was brought forth by, huh? yeah, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the Taurus. It's Italy. Oh, that's the Taurus. Yeah, it's Italy. Italy. Beretta's Sorry. from Italy. Italy. Whatever. Yeah, Italy. Same, same place. Same Italy. thing. <laughs> So wait, no, wait, now back up here. You you shoot your XD better than your your HK? Um, I don't know. I shoot my HK pretty well. I th- my probably. I think you're probably right. Isn't that HK supposed to be the like HK's HK is good, but the XDM is really awesome to shoot. It's smooth. Really? It's one. It's easy. Anyone could shoot that XDM. Even with that that you back could shoot that XDM. That ba- <laughs> you turkey. <laughs> Even with that weird backstrap. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, safety. It's and, a shootable gun. And and like quick drills and all that. Mm. Yeah, it's not bad. I like my I like my VP9 though. Yeah. Pretty soon I'll like my PD10. You know, I went on the HK website just looking at this because one of our friends was texting and they got one, right? They got an HK? No, yeah. Isn't that what the what the text was that we got? So you got? Oh you got yeah, yeah, yep, yep. He got right? that. He got that. That was right? Josh. Josh got it one. So I have to go on and look, I have to look because I have to I have to be one of the cool kids and know what's going on, right? So I get on and look at the HK's website and it's the only good looking gun on there. HKs are freaking ugly. Like guns. a six. Like yeah. a sig, sigs are ugly. Damn it, isn't uh, that sigs thing? Sigs are that, ugly. The, the 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 VP though is is a decent looking gun. Yeah, it's a good yeah. gun. It's our only affordable gun. Yeah, <laughs> it's their striker fired gun. And the trigger's nice though. I remember yeah, you having me shoot that, bad. and it wasn't that was it was nice. So, I I thought it was. You it was got good. one, don't you? What's that? VP nine, yeah. Yeah, I have like the law enforcement edition or whatever. It yeah. Is. Does that just mean longer barrel? No, it's uh, night sights and. Um, it comes, comes, with, comes with like three magazines and, instead of two. But. And a bayonet and a... Yeah, it's got a little bipod that you flip out. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. And it's got the... that you, you can hook the... You can get the turret for your car that there like hooks into, right, your, yeah. it hooks into the, 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 the rear view mirror on yeah, the, on the outside, the got, side there mirror. You yeah. go. So you it's got like shoot a spot you're... where you can put a night stick because it's a long... Yeah, yeah. It's so. a long for, Yeah, the <laughs> night stick spot and the <laughs> true. Well, a little baton. Yeah, right. little baton. Anyhow, yeah. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Let's Should say. fit into that holster that you got with the damn Wi-Fi. Or maybe it was the handcuffs. And... No, you can put the handcuffs The handcuffs spot in there. <laughs> oh, true. Anyway. True. And the leather and chains. <laughs> or is that <laughs> another? No, 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 That's no, no, a no. different edition. No, no, no. no. Different the podcast. The That's not long. Different podcast. After this. Oh, oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> Coming to you in the midnight hour. <laughs> yeah, I got to go home for that one. I'm, I'm too young for that. Cue the shitty sax music. So thoughts from behind the gun counter, sir. Uh, I am actually, these are not my thoughts. Um, Dan gave me some thoughts. Where is Dan? He needs to come be a part of this. Yeah. He needs to probably listen to the podcast. I He might. I don't know. He does not. He needs something to do. He told me the other day. He's like, I need something to do. But anyway, um, he told me he had some thoughts from behind the gun counter. I'm going to use his thoughts. Okay. Um, this is somewhat gun related, but it's more hunting related. Um, we okay, don't want because you guys sell hunting we, licenses, yes, and, and we stuff. don't want to discriminate against hunters because they are gun owners. Um, right. Uh, so, this is kind of a rant for, from Dan. Uh, I kind of agree with him. When you come in and you want a hunting license, you want you know, you know, people put in on their hunts, put you know, different things like that. The regs come out. You have access to the regulations. You can find out what hunt, what zone, all right. of that stuff. Don't show up at the gun counter wanting a license or wanting a tag and don't have a clue what you're after. 
do your research, get your stuff, write it down on right. paper. Wait, wait, wait. Come in, tell us what you want. They don't know what they want to hunt? Is that what you're saying? No, they know what they want to hunt. Like, they don't if they know where hunt they want to hunt. Oh, where? They're like, oh, well, oh. what zone is, you know? And I'm like, well, that's actually, you know, I, I'm, it's not our job to figure uh, it out for them. Right, right. Um, okay. And then there's people lined up behind them while they're sitting there in the book trying to figure out where they want to They hunt. make little pieces of paper that are in that book. Right. That you can photocopy or you can go get, like, if you need five of them or four of them, you can go get four um, regs. Yeah. Tear the page out, put all your information in, figure out where you want to hunt, yep. fill that out. Then you walk into a sporting goods store, you walk up to the counter, you slide your paperwork over there, yep. and you say, I want to put in for these. And he goes, that's perfect. And they type them in, it takes a couple minutes, and yep. you're out of there. There you go. And I yeah. think we talked about the same thing, kind of about if you want to go purchase a firearm. Didn't we talk about this? Yeah. Do a same little thing. research, a little research and find out what kind of maybe what you're after. Right? Yeah. Sure. Exactly. I mean, it doesn't Don't just hurt. walk up and say, give me a fancy one. Well, there I mean, granted, I, I'll, shelf. <laughs> I'll take the time and I'll go through things with them. Um, but I'll be the first one to tell them if they're, if they're really undecided. You're right. I'm not going to expect them to buy a gun. In fact, I'd rather them not buy a gun if they're undecided. I, I don't want them to make like a, just a rash decision right on the spot. Call me. You can come shoot some of mine. I can help you figure out what you want, yeah. what fits you. Go I'll do, do some research. It'll cost you a little bit, but I'll do that. You just you. type in, if there's two guns that you're thinking of, type in that versus the other one. Yeah. And there's probably something out there. You can watch a whole big thing about it. and Or just go to a gun show where you can just, Oh, you know, good Lord. Don't fondle everything. You know, it's just laying out there. Fondle. Speaking of gun shows, there's a gun huh? show coming up in Filer on the 9th. Uh, the 9th, right? Ninth oh, Dean yeah. probably got fondled at a gun show once. Did that's you probably, get fondled at a gun show? That's probably show? why he's Was so... Was it when you were reading the Louis L'Amour books by the Dragon Handled Knife? <laughs> <laughs> Dean is right like, next to all the dragon sculptures. <laughs> <laughs> Dean's over there. Oh, Louis. You're so... Oh, wow. That was a good one. <laughs> What's your name again? Well, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Dover. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, uh, you said you had a class today. I had a class today. You were there too. Oh yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm hoping you were there. And when was that? It was a yeah, a few hours yeah. ago. I it was a, forgot. It was a big class. It was. It was a good size it's class. About, I think it's like 25, 26, yeah, we, 25 people there. I think. Yeah, first miscounted, but it was only, 25 it was only people by one. So. 25 people there. We ended up with enough money for 26. I'm trying to figure out how that worked out, but... Someone paid twice? They must have. Oh, my wife's calling. Is this 25 at the um, at the range? Or 25 total for the whole thing? That, no, there's only 25 at the range. There's more people actually in the class, but they're going to come back and shoot at a different time. Okay. So, great class. Yeah, it good went, class. It was pretty good. I mean, and they, for as big as it was... Everything worked. Everything ran pretty smoothly, besides yeah. it getting a little hazy in there, which it tends to do when you shoot indoors. Mesothelioma, yeah. To be honest with you, it was, if the pit, the shooting range wasn't muddy, we could have probably shot outside and been just fine today. Temperature right. it wise, was it nice was nice today. It was nice. Bad. Yeah. So, you know, I'm um, trying to think if there was any interesting any, guns there. Nothing. I, I didn't see anything like too. Nothing crazy. Crazy. There was a lot of little guns today. A lot of little guns. A lot of little guns. A lot of. A lot of Rugers today. Now, I want to point out something. You're going to hate me for saying this, but that guy, he had a Taurus G2C. He was shooting steel-cased ammo out of it. He was on your, your yeah, end. Yeah, he was on my end. Was he a communist? No, but that did not foul up once one little bit. Not one single it shot every issue time. with that. Shot every time. Was it a 9 millimeter? Yeah. Not some like 9x19 Makarov no. fig? We did have some guy want to switch to his 1911. And uh, he he loaded up the magazine, put the magazine in, chambered around. He's like, click, oh. click. Yep. Why isn't this working? Why isn't this working? So uh, I grab a round because he had ejected the live round. And I'm looking at it. And I went, hmm, give me your magazine, sir. I grabbed his magazine. Look, he was loading up 40 cal into his 45. Oh. He, bought, he had grabbed my. the wrong ammo when he bought it. So I felt bad for him. He had two boxes of forty cal there. He was so pissed. And he just, what was he shooting otherwise? Oh, uh, he had a nine. He was shooting uh, as well. But he also had some forty five, some other forty five with him. That he he shot, but that was kind of funny actually. 
But that's oh, that, that. So he obviously didn't shop at D&B because they wouldn't have let that travesty that's happen. That's right. So you need to yeah. pay yeah. attention yeah. to what you're buying, okay? Uh, 40 cal for a 40 cal hanging. 45 for a 45. Just, it's probably a simple mistake. And it could have been the fact that he may have looked at the 45 and he may have just reached up and someone may have had actually 40 in that spot or yeah. something. It happens. It could happen, yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to think of what else we had. In, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna rant just a little okay. bit. Finish with your rant. And then I'm going to touch on something that we talked about last week. Uh, you jump on this because the rant's going to take a while. No, go ahead. I'm fi- okay, I'm fired up. I wrote it down so I won't forget it. I am fired up. I have talked about this before. I have people call me that want to take the class. They want to sign up for the class. And the first thing they do when I answer the phone is they tell me about all their qualifications. Before you get too far, put the knife down. <laughs> They're going <laughs> to stab somebody. Can I move yeah, over but there? They do. Yeah. They... they They tell me all their qualifications. I'm this, I'm that. I'm NRA certified instructor. I used to teach a class like this. I was in post academy. I worked for fishing game when I carried a gun and I shot the shooting qualification and I'm a certified range officer, range master. And anyhow, I want to take your class, but I don't need to take the shooting portion. (laughs) That's, That's what I get. This guy showed up today with his wife, and he was a nice guy. And his wife was, and actually, his wife could shoot like a son of a gun. Did you see her target? Yeah, she was shooting a forty. Well, cal. yeah, she was shooting that forty. She was shooting that forty. She owned that forty she, cal than most. Better she was than pretty fragile looking. Better I mean, than most men that I see yeah. with a forty cal. She owned that. 40 you would, cal. and by looking at her, you would not think that she could handle that. No, like that. she was. She, she was fragile, and she was cutting a line right in that paper. Right? Yeah. Anyhow, she makes smiley face and. And she probably could have if you would have asked her. Her nose and give some nice hair. Was, Paul, Paul says 40s aren't dead. The 40s are dead. They died last year. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my goodness. You need to listen to the last podcast, oh obviously. Oh, yeah, that, that was the I'm whole gonna, I'm going to touch on it here yeah? after he's done. Oh. So, anyhow, this guy shows up. And I'm, they, I meet him out in the parking lot. We're walking into the classroom. And I hope he doesn't listen to this podcast. First thing he says is... I'm a certified NRA instructor. I'm a certified uh, range master. I've taken the course. I've passed it. All this stuff, you know, and and that's fantastic. He was there to help his wife. He wasn't actually here to shoot. He's here just to kind of support his wife, which is great. He was, whenever I have someone that starts off like that, they are the first one to break the rules, to break the gun safety, safety rules, rules yeah. to, break, to break the range safety <clears throat> rules. He is, they, those are the first ones. They're the first ones to do that. Um, we were we were there, and I think I irritated him at one point because he started asking me about the NRA, and I started talking to him and telling him that uh, I was um, pretty sure that the NRA was dying and was gonna was dead and dying, and that I didn't really support it, and he didn't really like that very much. He got a little excited when I said that, and he just kind of stomped off huffy. Well, toward the very end, everyone had got done shooting. The range, uh, I asked the people if they want to go get their targets, they can go get the target. So they said, yeah. So I called cold range. And when I call cold range, everyone leaves everything on the firing line, leaves <coughs> yeah, everything on the I tables. I called it too because the one guy went for it. Yep. Yeah. And I, everyone has to back away from the tables. And no one approaches the table. No one grabs magazines, ammo, guns, anything until everyone's back around. And I call hot range again, you know, and then they yeah. can get their stuff. So I called cold range, and everyone did awesome. Yeah, everyone stood back. Well, one guy went forward, but then we, we you know, we, we stopped. I don't think he heard us. He didn't get to it, and so, it, but it's okay because so, he wasn't there yet. So, so this guy, this particular gentleman, <laughs> who I had issues with, was on the very end, and he kind of he looked around a little bit. I could see him look around. And people are walking down range, mind you. He stepped up to the table, very slowly. Stood at the table and looked back and forth, looked around a little bit, and then really quickly stuck his hands out and he grabbed he grabbed the handgun, grabbed his ammo, and turned around and walked off. I'm like, dude, you just and you saw it too. Yeah, I saw it. And I was gonna say something. We were so close to the end of the class. You broke a major freaking safety rule at the range. Yeah, and he's an NRA instructor. And supposedly he's a, a range master. Range master. Supposedly NRA instructor. Range master. Yeah. I didn't say anything to him at this point because I just wanted him to leave. Sounds like an ass master. I kind of. I 
he was just kind of he was kind of just rude. Yeah. He was rude and a pain in the butt. I'm about ready to tell people, if you take my class, if you're not shooting, you you can't even hang out for support. That's about what I'm ready to say. Or hang out in the back. And or hang out in the back. There's no reason why he should have been at the table to begin and with. And try to offer if he's not shooting, there's no reason yeah. he should have been up. And there. I, I'm okay with criticism. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with that. And um, but p- people try to offer and t- they try to tell me how to do my classes. They try to tell me how to do it. They try to offer helpful su- suggestions. And it's my freaking class. And if you could do it, damn it, you would do it yourself. Yeah. If he's a certified instructor, well, just, why does he need to you yeah. to? I, so anyhow. You know what? Don't call me asking for a class for yourself or your wife and then go down the list of what qualifications you have because I really, I don't give a rat's ass. I mean, it, well, it really doesn't It makes matter. no different. It doesn't. It should not to me. make a damn bit of difference. And uh, it's just, yeah. Anyhow, that that was my big, my big, my big thing. I get today. you. I was, I was thinking the same things. So. And then whenever someone talks to me about the NRA, you know, I am an NRA certified instructor and I pay for my certification and I research when I have to research. That type of thing, but I, you know, let let the record show. I'm not a member of the NRA, and I don't ever plan on being. Well, I was one time. I don't ever plan on being a member of the NRA. If I'm going to put my money somewhere, by the way, it's going to be in, um, um, oh, gun owners of America. Gun owners of America. Yeah, right that's, now, the, that, they, that's the probably the most proactive group out there. The right NRA now. right now is it's it's been for doing this for years. It's slowly starting to implode. It, I mean it really is slowly starting to implode. In fact, there was a big article I read the other day about a range, you know, there's like there's like 12 people in the training department and they deal with how many certified instructors. They deal with thousands and thousands and thousands of certified NRA instructors. That's who you call to talk to. And there was a big article um, that was actually released by Rob Pincus, um, creator of the PD-10. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyhow. Mythical, <laughs> mythical creature. <laughs> he, he, re- he released this article of this guy who was an NRA instructor, has been an NRA instructor for 30 years, have, has raised money, been chairperson, you name it. And he was having trouble with the NRA, um, doing some kind of credentials or getting his paperwork or sending him something. And he was frustrated, and he'd be de- dealing with this for, a, like, weeks or months. He called the NRA, the training headquarters part of it, and the dude, and I, it's not real professional, okay? I understand. He used a bad word on the phone and supposedly offended the NRA person that was on the phone. They pulled his freaking NRA instructor credentials, revoked them. Because he said a bad word? Because he said a bad word because he was frustrated on the phone. You know what? I I don't I don't I don't really care to. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to throw around the f word all the time. In fact, that's one word I don't say. It is what it is. If you want to say it, you want to say. It. You know what? Sometimes men say adult words. You're just going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to live with it. You're going to have to big boy up when the wrench slips and you bust your knuckles. Right. And he this guy was frustrated. But yeah, freaking NRA gun owners pull your money out of the NRA. Go to Gun Owners of America because that's. If if I didn't have to have if I didn't I'm getting hot here if I put, put the knife down <laughs> if I didn't have to be if I didn't have to be an NRA uh, certified instructor so I could do these classes um, for the concealed carry permits and so because unfortunately the NRA still carries a little bit of street cred out there with people if I did not if I didn't feel like I actually had to have it I would not be an NRA certified instructor. There's well, has, no has way not the be. NRA gone a little bit soft on their... They've gone soft on everything. On their lobbying, on their advocation And for, they're funneling money. The big guys yeah. up there are making tons of freaking money, and they're sitting there not doing anything. There's, yeah. Th- that's another thing. You join them once, and then forevermore, they're hounding you for yeah. more money. They I'm will d- not leave you alone. If I didn't... That's the only ties I want to the NRA. In fact, I went through a couple years ago, and on any of my paperwork that said <laughs> NRA on it, I took it off. I took it off. I don't want to be, I mean, an NRA instructor, I got to have that part, but I don't affiliate myself with the freaking NRA. And I'm not the only one out there that feels like this. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of old timers, which is fine. They've done it for years and they're going to keep doing it. But it is, they need to, people seriously need to look into gun owners of America. There's a gentleman that took our class today. I forget his name. He's the one that talked to you at the store the other day. 
He was the first guy here. I told him, uh, told you that me and him were having a conversation. Yep, yep. He <laughs> actually told me that he pulled all his money because of us, and he did his own research. He pulled all his money out of the NRA, and he pledged it all and, and joined Gun Owners of America, and okay. that's who he supports now. Yeah. And I encourage everyone to take a deep, long, hard look at it for yourselves. Don't take my word. Take a look at it for yourselves. Look yeah. into it for yourselves and decide. Edu- educate yourself on Educate it. yourself. Yeah, don't just... Yeah. Look at the people who are supporting your rights or are fighting for your rights, okay? Mm-hmm. And then look at the people... Proactively. Like proactively. Not just, not they're just not waiting just for something waiting to happen. for something to happen and then reacting to it. Yeah. They're out there pushing for... Yeah. Know. Look at the people who... You know, NRA, they say one thing, you know, the bump stock ban, when that first when that first happened, the first, the shooting over there, the Mandalay Bay, they came out and they said, we wish Trump would have, uh, we think Trump and his administration should, and ATF should relook at the bump stock. There's no reason for them. Maybe they need to get rid of them. Maybe they need to outlaw them or, or do something. Why would the NRA say that? Because they're the freaking NRA. Holy balls. Bunch of commies. So... Now, as <laughs> you, that's a little too much there. You, you just crossed the line. Call me just a you little just, strong. <laughs> so that was that was that was that old eighties phrase, like woo, pinko. Con- Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, they just came out about three weeks to a month ago when Trump was actually considering and talking about. And they probably will do it. I would imagine this bump stock ban. Yep. They came out and they said, we're appalled that the Trump administration is actually considering doing this. You freaking called for it a year ago. Yeah. You called for this a year ago and now you're backpedaling because it may cost you some freaking dollars. If you want to save yeah. money, quit sending me piles of crap in the mail every week. All those mailings cost money. That adds up. You're right. Good. Yeah. That's horseshit. Grief. Yeah. That's Gun owners going. of yeah. America. I'm going to hashtag this freaking. Morgan Morgan says gun, or, gun owners of America is great. Gun. It, it is. They are. Sure. Gun owners of America. That is who you need to be funneling your money to. And there's others too. But the probably the biggest one is, <coughs> is gun owners of America. Yeah. Do what you need to do. And that guy was pushing the NRA insurance in my class today and i just wanted to... nra insurance for carry insurance no, carry wait, wait, guard no, no Did... there's better now yeah no it wasn't there's, there's other there's just other something in the happened. news recently some state outlawed that was it washington uh, they yeah. outlawed carry yeah carry insurance so carry guard was i'm going to throw this since we're talking about the freaking nra nra brought out carry guard okay and and the funny thing, when they introduced Carry Guard, they were getting ready to have their NRA convention or the NRA show, whatever yeah. whatever it's called. There were some other people that showed would show up every year that also had Carry Insurance, other groups, USCCA stuff like that, uh, Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network, that kind of stuff. They canceled. They were going to release Carry Guard. They canceled those those companies. They they NRA came in and canceled those tables and told those companies you can't come this year. Because they were releasing their carry guard. So yes, it's their show. They can do what they want. But so now they release their carry guard. And then they then they release their new training. So they offer training classes now, the NRA mm-hmm. does. Not only do they certify instructors, but you can go and take NRA training from the NRA. So they have just done that. There is thousands and millions and whatever certified instructors through the NRA. They're NRA certified instructors yeah. that offer classes. So the, and you have and you have to go to the NRA to get certified for these classes. So now the NRA is going to start their own training program and train people. I know my knife <laughs> and train and train people. Yeah, You're, they're just screwing the people no, that paid aren't. the thousands and thousands of people that pay their dues. They're stealing their business and screwing them. And probably, you know, for a while there, I think they were afraid they're going to get put out of business because the NRA is a huge name. Why are you donating money to someone who's doing that to you? Yeah. Why are you doing that? I mean, maybe I need to look into it, but maybe they already have something. Maybe Gun Owners of America needs to come out and they need a certify instructor. That's what I was about to say. Because you know what? I'll be the first one on board for that crap. Yeah. I'll get I'll get certified by them. But oh, anyhow, that's my NRA. And every weekly, someone brings it up to NRA, and the more I just want yeah. to pull my freaking hair out. The NRA is not the end all. They were great at one point. They were, yeah. And they are big. Don't get me wrong. They are big. But anymore, they are not the end all be all of your rights. No. They've come to a spot where they've 
They've done a lot of good. They're here, they're here. And that's the only thing anyone ever sees. And that's the only reason why they're getting the money that they get anymore. It's name recognition. It's name recognition. Yeah. They have they are they've turned from a like a lobbying organization to a to an education to a they're just a freaking corporation and they don't really care anymore. They're just generating revenue for themselves. Yep. And that's why they had to get into the training because they need to generate revenue because people aren't signing up with them anymore. So there you go. There you go. Sorry, but uh, maybe, the, you know, I think I probably just probably didn't certify myself a ticket to SHOT Show next year. Uh-oh. What, is NRA in charge of SHOT Show? I don't have any idea, but I'm bad talk everyone, so whatever. Okay, so you had some... You wanted to talk about, didn't you, Mark? That's why they don't want you there. You're such a damn negative Nancy. I'm an ass. <laughs> so, okay. Mercy. So we're going to get off... We're gonna get off that topic. Sorry. We can come back. We oh, we come may because I'm still still boiling, um, still bubbling inside. You see how hot I got for that? I don't. Serious, I don't know yeah. if I want to talk about this now because you're kind of boiled up about it. <sighs> go, go for it. <laughs> this I'm might good. this might ease the tension, even though you're gonna get frustrated. Go for it. So last week we talked about we had the debate. Um, Got to get ready. Paul says that the <laughs> '40s aren't dead. '40s dead. And um, I said, you know, my little spiel on it. Which really wasn't much. It was just a bunch of information. I didn't really have an opinion on it. Um, well, how much, how much forty do you sell at at D and B? Well, okay, enough to to gangsters. Yeah, Tarver <laughs> Tarver doesn't believe they're dead. Todd thinks they're dead. I'm like middle of the table, kind of like. I think between. there's enough out there. It'll survive. It'll survive, but yeah. Talking about it all last week. Kind of got me thinking a little bit. Okay, I want to hear your thoughts. And um, I'm riled up. Quit going. You're, I had a little I'm bit of down. You don't do that. Had a oh little bit. Of, I had a little bit of nostalgia, <laughs> like some reminiscing. Okay. Of my Glock 23. Nostalgia. I'm so sorry. Well, do I sold wake it. Up shivering at night. I sold it to a guy nightmares. that I know, and I thought, you know what? Is that a 40? Yeah. The 23 is the a 40. 23 okay, is a 40. come on, spit it out. I, so I called him. Are you trying to trigger me? I, I called him and I asked if uh, he still had it. Your buddy? I, I wanted to buy it back. Are you freaking kidding me? Not kidding. Um, I really like that gun, actually. Uh, who did you call? Who was it? It was Gus. You know Gus. Him. Yeah. So did you buy it back? No, because he sold it. <laughs> Good for him. He didn't even want the damn thing. Well, <laughs> it was kind of a... <laughs> he didn't want it either. It wasn't necessarily that it was just a 40. It was kind of special because... It was a government Glock, is what I call it. It has a right. government serial number on it. Um, that was kind of the draw to me, is that it had a, you know, U.S. serial right. number on it. So um, I don't know. That's just. Uh, so anyhow, so he, he you, sold it. Um, are you going to go buy one now? Because you want a forty again? No, I was just hoping to get that one back because. Okay. Well, I put a lot of miles on it. You didn't even want it because it was a forty cal. You talked about the serial. You just wanted it because of what it was. Yeah, but I, I did put a, a lot of, of miles on it. History. I put a lot of rounds through it. Until it was, when? Well, until I sold it and got a Glock 19. Oh, until you sold it and got a 9 millimeter. Yeah. That's right. There you go. The truth comes out. <laughs> Come on. But, I baited you right into that. But at oh the gosh, same Todd, time. Do you need I a mean, safe place? Do you I have safe space No, here? I don't. <laughs> At the same time, though, I'm like, it was a good gun. I, I broke it in. I mean, that thing was well oiled machine. I okay. just, I kind of miss it. I mean. You miss the gun. You don't miss the caliber. You miss the gun, not the caliber. You I, just I, told me no, that it was I, a special true. Glock because it had a U.S. It's government true. serial number. You missed but the But you think gun. the Glock 19, same frame, same size and everything, not caliber, would fill that void. Why did you sell that gun? But it doesn't. Why did you sell that gun? Because nine millimeter was cheaper to shoot. And why else? So it wasn't so special then, was it? No. Okay. Gus, Gus wanted a gun. I mean, I don't care I'm not about putting him. it on him. I don't care about Gus. I'm not putting it on him. He's but probably watching. He wanted a gun. I said, well, you know, I kind of want to get into this Glock 19. I'll sell you this one, right? And I told him when I sold it to him, if he ever goes to sell it, let me know first. Right. He doesn't care. He didn't care. No. So. So. 40. Okay. As a self-defense round, 40s are dead. 40s are dead. There's no need for him for a self-defense round anymore. You got good, good nines with good self-defense rounds, hollow points, technologies come a long ways. You don't need a freaking 40 anymore. What about what about forty five? Would you say the same thing about forty five? No. So what's the difference then? 
Just, just I'm, I'm not trying to be an ass. I just, I just want to know. I you want just, to pick your you, brain. I, I think see. with a nine, the nine has soaked up that gap. So there. So what, what <clears throat> niche does a forty-five fill then? You got a small wiener? I don't know. Yeah, it's compensation. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's Viagra for those that oh, shoot forty, uh, that shoot nines. No, if you, I mean, you know, you got the guys that carry. So you it, got, was bound, <laughs> it was bound to come out sometime. You got. You, <laughs> You got keep it in. I don't want to. See. <laughs> no, no, no. You no. got the guys that like to shoot their 1911s, right? Yeah. So there you go. That's the guys that is. Is that everyone the... shoots nines now? Almost everybody shoots nines. All yeah. your 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 agencies have gone to nine millimeters. Everyone shoots a freaking nine. Now, why do they shoot it? Now more. We'll get, man, we could discuss this, this every is a freaking question. week. This is a question I have. I will if, fight it. If a, in the event that a nine millimeter is used as like a defense thing, right? Uh huh, and it doesn't work. Like it doesn't stop the threat. Is there going to be the debate open back up again that the forty was should have never gone away? No, because they had more rounds. But it didn't work. You could shoot more accurate. Let's say it accurate, didn't work though. You can shoot more accurately, accurate, whatever, more accurate with a nine. You could, but and then you pump seventeen rounds in. If you're, you're like, with the fifteen rounds of forty, had done better than the seventeen rounds of nine. It's no. Here's the thing, and I guess if you want to boil it down, we'll kick out the nine, we'll kick out the forty, we'll kick out the forty-five, we'll kick out everything, and I'll tell you right now, shot placement. You're only going to stop a person if you hit him. So the caliber that works is the one that you can hit the person with. Okay, it's all about it's all about shot placement. It's all about getting the round on target. It's the one that hits him, which it's going to do the job. You know, you know what right. I'm saying? But it, what, what was the reason why they went to the forty in the first place? I mean, yes, the 10 millimeter was too much. Okay, you know, you know this answer. They went down. You know this answer, so tell me. Well, the original thing was that the 9 millimeter was not effective. It is it was effective not now. stopping though. the threat. It is effective now. They have come so no, far. No, it is, and I'll agree. The technology's evolved. So the technology's there. But you what, don't this is, need it. This is like a what if, and I hate doing what ifs. And I'm going to answer the same way every time, so go for it's it. It's just, if that event comes up again, and the 9 millimeter does not stop the threat, does not do its job, the debate will open right back up about having the 40 again. It may, or it may just jump up to the 10, get a 10. Well, Man, might as I wish well I had now. some popcorn. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's anymore though. You're not, I don't think you're going to come up with, cause you, you're talking, you know, shooting the car doors and that, right? <laughs> shooting through the car. Paul. <laughs> Oh, gun regret hits us all. Yeah. So, what does what Paul? What did Paul say? Careful. Paul says that, careful. <laughs> he might like, stick you with. That. Yeah. So, so, so the forty thing that came up. They got the forties because the nines weren't making it through the freaking doors, car doors in the Hollywood right. shootout. Correct. Have you seen a car door lately? I could punch through it with a twenty-two long yeah. rifle. It doesn't matter. That, right. That's that's null and void at this point. Your your buddy Dan, when he came in here, uh, right, Dan from the yeah. gun counter. Yeah, we we we've previewed that video where the cop shot out his front windshield with his nine and started blasting away at the car in front right. of him. Yeah. So anyhow, I'm we just, could ha- we I know. This I'm is- just saying that eventually something's going to happen that's going to raise that question: Is the nine going to be effective? We know what's the next caliber going to be a forty-one. Well, that's already gone by the wayside. Yeah, Smith and Wesson made that. Yeah, Did they make a forty-one? Yeah, they made a forty-one Magnum. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. It's a hot round. It's nice. Forty-two. The thirty-eight super. So anything with the f- <laughs> any th- <laughs> the super. There you My go. <laughs> this is this is very similar to the pissing contest that goes on around hunting circles about what's the best hunting round and uh, yeah. you know what all the uh, you know remember Winchester brought out their short rounds and their super short Magnums and yeah where are those now. No way. Yeah. I, I mean, I I think I, in oh, my... I saw, I read. Oh. Oh? What? <laughs> Learn how to properly shoot, and you can shoot a 40. The, uh, I can yeah, shoot. Yeah. John, John, okay. uh, now, John says that the 40 is too big for you. I could shoot a freaking 40. You should. I know. We heard the story. I can yeah. shoot See, a I'm not 40. a caliber snob. I'll shoot anything. I'll yeah. shoot anything, too. I can shoot it. I've seen 40 ruin so many people. Now, I will so agree with people. you on that. Because I of hate the snappiness. The and I stuff. hate the freaking forty. Everyone thinks not everyone is a good portion of the population that thinks the forty is the end all be all of freaking calibers. And they come to <clears> class <throat> and they can't shoot it worth a shit. They just they can't. It jumps around. Why am I pulling left? Why am I pulling right? Why am I not hitting the bullseye? Because you're not man enough to shoot the freaking forty. Just go with a nine millimeter at this point. 
I'm serious. The best and the most amazing thing happened today in class. That the, little, that yeah. older lady shot that freaking forty. <clears throat> she shot it for a while. It started to take its toll on her, so she switched switched to her G nineteen. But she could shoot the forty. But people aren't willing to take the time. I guess this is what it boils down to. People aren't willing to take the time and really focus on their shooting and figure out what they're doing wrong. Yeah. So they have to drop down to a nine millimeter. So I guess maybe people want the quick fix. And they I'll agree, the, I'll agree they with you on that. They want the quick fix. That 40 does kill a lot of shooters. Like not kill. Like, <laughs> not yeah, not yeah. kill in the sense that it kills them. It just, it ruins them. It, it, it makes them not want to shoot. It just 40 kills it, more it people than nine millimeter. <laughs> it destroys their ego. It destroys them. I mean, yeah, it just, they just don't want to have anything to do with it. Right. Oh, gosh. Our listeners Dude. are going to get so tired of this caliber <laughs> so, uh, debate. You, you, you need to be a little know. more PC with this horse I shit. I think it's Tarver that has the small hands, yeah. right? Start, uh, yeah. start celebrating diversity. We should be glad we got 40 out there just as an option. I guess. It gives you more stuff to play with. If you want that if option. You want, if you want to, you know, you know, your your nine is good, but it's kind of fun to go out and shoot something that's great, makes great big holes and things. Yeah. Dean yeah. just likes to carry a 40. 40. Oh, shit. You carry oh, you carry a different caliber, actually. <laughs> What's that one you carry in the which, revolver? Which one? The the little <laughs> one. one. The little my little one is a thirty two H and R mag. Yeah, that's the one I carry the most. Yeah, I mean it's it's got ballistics similar to a nine millimeter, except it is a lot smaller. You know, right. as far as as far as speed feet per second coming out the barrel, it's about like a nine. Yeah. So I mean, if I uh, the only reason I have this thing is because I inherited it. Right, right, but I, man, it's sweet. The tr- it's a Smith and Wesson J frame. It's no hammer and oh, oh my it's gosh, nice gun. it's got a nice it. trigger. It's nice Holy gun. cow! I can, I can hit anything within ten, fifteen feet that I'm aiming at, and it's it's a it's sweet. Like, it's that's a sweet, really it's a sweet shooter. So here we we'll come back again to it. Then I can shoot that gun well, so I'm going to carry it. I can shoot it there well. There you go. Shoot right. what you, you can go. carry. Even though I shoot what you can hit with. In and the past, I've made so much fun of nine millimeter and small rounds, and and really, it's, it's just a pissing contest to kind of get under your skin. Really. I know it is. Yeah. I'd rather I'd rather hit the target, you know, twelve times with my nine, you know, my nine millimeter than twice with a freaking forty. But and that's what that's what people do. They can't. Do, that's all they need. I'm shooting a freaking forty. No, that's all it's they need. not. Oh, it is. That'll stop the threat. All right, what if like somebody just hands you oh, a gun? Oh Lord, here we go. They hand you a gun. <laughs> right? You don't. They, it's loaded. Okay, they don't hand it to you. You pick it up off the table. Okay. You don't know what caliber or nothing. Okay. You just grab the gun. Okay. And you start shooting it. Would you be able to tell if it was a forty? Oh, I could tell if it was a forty because forty is more of a snap. Forty-five is a push, and nine is neither. It's a slap across the face with I a wiener. I kind of want to challenge him on that. And I, I don't want to do another challenge right now, <laughs> but I want to see if, that would, if he can actually figure it out. 40 is a snap. I mean, I, I'm thinking I could. I mean, typically a 40 I, is going to be snappy. It's gonna, 40 <clears throat> kind of wants to jump out of your hand and beat you on yeah. the face. 45 pushes. So 45 pushes, Right. For, depending on the size of the firearm. Yeah, I okay. got you. If it's an average size firearm, 45 pushes, 40 snaps. Yeah. And and nine kind of snaps too, but it's not near as bad. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm kind of uh, with Todd on this. I think we could tell if we if we had a okay. a contest. I think that would be interesting to yeah. not not blindfolded, obviously, because you want to hit your target. But I'll do it blindfolded and still hit the damn target. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, uh, no, I'm kind of. I think that would be kind of fun to try. You know, just to um, just to see if anybody could find out or you know figure it out. I think we could figure it out. I'd try it. It'd be really I'd hard. Try it. be I mean, maybe, maybe, and maybe I couldn't. Is the grip size on a on on a forty the if same you as got, a nine? If you got double on a, on a Glock, I I doubt you'd tell the difference. Now, if you went yeah. to a forty five, you could yeah, tell the difference. Yeah, it's a little thicker. Yeah, it's thicker. Yeah, but like a, between a twenty two, a Glock twenty two, and a Glock seventeen. What if you did like the probably single wouldn't be able stacks? To tell the difference. Like I know that the the Glock, what is it, thirty six, is a single stack. Do they make a single stack nine? Uh, the forty three, but that okay. was that's a huge difference. Like, is it? Yeah. It's it's pretty small, thin. Yeah. So a shooter, someone who shoots and who shoots properly and knows what they're doing, and isn't just gonna pick up a freaking handgun and start, you know, praying and spraying, should be able to pick up any gun, any handgun, nine millimeter, forty, forty five, yeah. ten, doesn't matter. And if you do everything correctly, you grip it right, you sight picture, you squeeze the freaking trigger right, 
Um, you know, your stance is right. Your, you know, everything is right. You should be able to shoot every one of those guns accurately. Hmm. Pick it up and shoot it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, true. If you do everything correctly, that muscle memory is there, and you do everything right, you should be able to shoot each and every one of those guns accurately. But people yeah. don't do that. That's true. They but don't do, you, do it. They psych themselves out. You know, <clears throat> they get ruined because I hate they to shoot say something that, too big. I hate to say it, but a lot of people do not shoot enough. They do not shoot enough to shoot to shoot great all the time. Does that make sense? They don't develop the muscle memory. They just don't shoot enough. I almost everyone. And I'm not saying I'm perfect because I have my problems too. But almost everyone has uh, some kind of flinch, some kind of trigger. You know, trigger. They're not. They're not pressing the trigger. They're yanking on that trigger. Yeah. They got some kind of flinch going on. And I, uh, they just do. They need to go out. They need to dry fire. They need to learn the trigger. They need to hold the thing absolutely still, as still as they possibly can when they're firing it. What did he say? I know you guys are reading. So, the well, Harley uh, says what what he doesn't understand is how the nine has improved so much, but the forty and the forty five haven't. Because people are looking more at round count. I think they're looking more at round <clears throat> count. They can hold more rounds. It's 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 not as snappy. It's not as big a recoil. So they're going to put more. They're going to push more, mm-hmm. you know, bigger bang, more more ammo. You want more ammo. And, and so they, they put more technology and more effort into improving the self-defense rounds of, of nines. But so I think same, self, so same self-defense rounds you can find in any caliber. So I, like I think what's can, happened is like like a but I think a lot the, of the people, nine millimeter of today has caught up with what the 40 and 45 was like 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And I think yeah. a lot of people want the round count. So one yeah. of the big things I push in every one of my classes is under stress. When you're shooting under stress, you're in a defensive encounter, your shot placement is going to, and I don't care who you are, yeah. your shot placement will drop 80%. by 80%. Yeah. 80%, you're under stress. No one goes out, so we can talk about it. No one goes out and gets their heart rate up. No one gets the adrenaline flowing. Mark does. No one goes out and gets out of breath and then tries to shoot and really see what happens. Right. So if we did the same test, um, not, you know, I knew what caliber, but you guns, I guarantee you, I bet you people would get their heart rate elevated, their adrenaline would be going, and then you hand them a freaking 40 to shoot. Oh my gosh, watch this shit show. Yeah. You hand them a nine millimeter, it's going to be a lot better. As far as the rounds go, like the the hydro shock, let's just say as an example, hydro shock. It's the same bullet design, just different calibers. Right. I think it's so people, the that technology right. has evolved with all calibers. So I but, understand that. I I think people are going for round count at this. Point. I would agree. Under the capacity is definitely there nice was a, to have. I saw a video on YouTube and it was like a like a chest cam a body mm. cam of a law enforcement officer nothing against him there was a guy in a house he had a knife they're trying to tell the guy to get out whatever he wouldn't he started coming at him with the knife and the guy the officer had his gun out and he shot bang 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 bang, bang. shot till he was out click 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 the guy didn't realize he stopped the guy he didn't realize how many he ta- how many times he shot he actually pulled that trigger. Yeah. He had no idea, no clue. And that could happen to every one of us. You know, you're Easily. under stress. Bang, 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 even, bang, bang, bang. Even bang. under just a little bit of stress. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you remember, you remember uh, back when I first moved to the valley here, we went out shooting at the, at the gravel pit out here and we put some balloons up on a board. We put three balloons up. We're like, okay, oh, yeah. who can shoot them first? Just the pressure of who can shoot faster. Oh, yeah. And I don't know about you, but. I, I just pulled out my pistol and I was just shooting a 22 revolver. Yeah. And went bang, bang, bang. I didn't hit a freaking thing. I didn't even hit the board. But yet, if you would have turned around slowly and went bang, 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 you would have yeah, nailed every single one. nailed it. it. Even just that little you bit. You haven't played with our new toy, the shot timer. It's oh, kind yeah? of fun. Pretty cool. Yeah. I still want to. I want to get a group of guys, even if it's just not even a class, it's something we do. I want, and you've done this with rifles, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, whether we. Run to the fence and back, or do burpees or push-ups yeah. or or something. Get the heart rate elevated, and then have now it- I've added in another element to that. What? Where you you know somebody does something to your rifle, purposely tries to make it malfunction, or you have to put put it together. We've done that. Right. Where you had to put something in it to make it function. Oh yeah. And then you have to shoot the balloons, like like what or you were whatever, yeah, yeah, or whatever. Um, that adds another element to it because you're you're you get your heart rate up. You're sitting there trying to figure out what you have to do to make that weapon right. work, and then 
you know, first person to get the balloons wins basically. But that's, that's even Oh harder. yeah. And people don't understand that. That's why you need, the more rounds you have, the better. Yeah. I, I, mm. I'm, it's not because I'm a poor shot. It's because everyone's almost everyone's a poor shot under stress. Everyone's a poor shot when, when adrenaline's running, you know, it just, that's what happens. Yeah. And you're going to shoot shots. You don't know you've even shot or you're not going to be yeah. accurate. It's, it's going to happen. It will. Yeah. And it's very dynamic and you're not squaring up to the target and slowly raising that gun and bang, bang, bang. You're freaking throwing lead down range fast. Yeah. And your heart's a th- hundred miles an hour. That's another reason why you practice reloads and stuff like that yeah. too. I mean, so anyhow, that's, that's my thoughts on it, but I'm not trying cool. to convince anyone. We all have what we like and what we think, and that's fine. But if you look at it, everyone's going to the nine. You remember uh, Mike Myers used to be on Saturday Night Live? Yep. He had a skit that was called, If It's Not Scottish, It's Crap. Yeah. Well, if it's not nine, it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, that's my thoughts on that. A good discussion, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Fair discussion. I have to do it. I mean, oh, he's talking. That's about okay. It. That's he's, okay. That and you know, it's it's every forum you want. You're on every Facebook page. You're on, and that is brought up every yeah, single well, I mean, time. Just the last, you know, last week's talk. It kind of got me thinking, and I'm, I I'll be honest. I do kind of miss that gun. Um, right. It wasn't just the the serial number and stuff. I, that was my f- first Glock. Right. Um. I didn't really care that it was a 40, to be honest with you. Right. I just, I liked it. So let me, let me throw this out there. I don't want to keep going on this too long, but if we, let's rule out semi-autos. Okay. Let's rule out semi-autos. And I, I know my revolver's okay. I can shoot a revolver okay. But let's talk about revolvers. 38 special, 357. Five rounds in each, typically. Is that what it is? On the yeah. self-defense hideaway ones, yeah. Okay. What about like a like a forty four mag? Is that five rounds? Six. It's usually Is it six. six. Yeah. Okay. Only a fool carries that for. A, well, I know, but I'm just I'm, for a what, I'm, what I'm getting out as I'm looking. I've at, been looking, and no one really, no one makes a forty four mag compact that's for forty four special. Forty four special. The other one is like charter arms. Isn't five rounds. Right? Five rounds. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Five let's rounds. talk about forty four special, three fifty seven, and thirty eight. You have the same round counts in each revolver. What would you carry? Forty four. Okay, Me hands too, down. Probably, I would carry a forty-four, hands down, just because it makes bigger holes. I, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I mean, I'm just going to go against everything I just talked about, right? But I guess when I think about revolvers, it's all this. I mean, I don't say it's all the same, but you're carrying five rounds, five rounds, five rounds. Okay. I mean, do you see where I'm I would? Going? I would That's probably like, thought. I would probably agree with you on the forty-four, but for just argument's sake, I'm going to say three fifty-seven Magnum. Okay. Um. Ballistically, like the the ballistic coefficients on a three fifty seven Magnum, pound for pound, probably the best round energy wise. Okay, and you got you guys are ballistic guys, so I'm not a I'm not you know what I'm saying. So I gotta dump some powder. How does how does the ballistics uh, nine millimeter versus forty look? Because pound well, for pound, you're gonna get more out of a forty. It well, I mean, okay, I yeah, because so. you got one hundred and eighty grain. Yeah, you know. And it's you can get up to 140, what is it, 147 grain, 9 millimeter? Yeah. Yeah. Most defensive rounds, though, in, in 9, what are they, 125? 124s, probably. Something, yeah. Yeah. I mean, 115s, 124s. I've, yeah. I've even seen 95 grain, 9 millimeter. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're, they're like the frangible ammo, you know, yeah. that, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, a 9 is essentially the same, it's, same caliber. It's almost as the same diameter. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like 355 versus 357. Anyway. Yeah. But there's a lot more. There's oh, a lot more behind a magnum. Yeah. yeah. What is a nine traveling at? About a thousand feet per second. It's a little over a thousand. A little over a thousand, and then you get a thirteen hundred or something like that. 1200. I don't know. I think you're going at about a thousand because three fifty seven is going to be going about twelve to it's thirteen. Between, to it's between it's between a thousand guy. and eleven hundred probably right? in that range. And yeah. three fifty seven, you can get the that box up to, up there up to fifteen hundred feet per second with a three fifty seven with, right. and that's the same diameter bullet. So it's got a lot more energy it's going in. Yeah. Yeah. And. Not so that's that just taller, but I mean, but <laughs> the, with the way that ammo has, has, has uh, improved, it's going to go in with a little hole, but then it comes out with a great big yeah. hole on the backside. 
regardless of how fast it's going. Hopefully it doesn't you know? come out. Now, shootability, that 357 barks pretty good. It I mean, does. It's, it does. It's compared to a 38 special, it's like 40 compared to 9. It's yeah. it's a bear to try to keep yeah. under control. So, and so. That, in this particular case, I just said 357 Magnum just because of the argument, but I would probably go with the 44. Uh, me, I'd go with the 41. I'm kidding. No. Oh. No. <laughs> Have at <laughs> it. <laughs> Make it so, number one. <laughs> So, but anyhow, if, you, if if you're a reloader, you can get a forty, load it down just a little bit to make it more manageable. No, well, and you're good. Okay. You could learn how to the shoot. Cross the cross between a nine and a forty, the three fifty seven yeah. Sig, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Oh, right, yeah. But so that's then what they getting... said about the forty being the best of both worlds between a forty five and a nine. So but you're getting, where does well, the three fifty seven Sig? You're just getting more horsepower out of the thing. Yeah. It's the same diameter. Where does it end? I mean, yeah, you could. So just if you want to get a 40, load it down a little bit, learn how to shoot it right, and then slowly work up to the full full house. 40 is the best of both worlds. So That's I what they said. Like it, men and women? Well, you know, I mean, no. No, no. <laughs> Celebrate so diversity, they're, my brand. Yeah. They're claiming... Shoot a 40. <laughs> what they... Celebrate diversity. Shoot a 40. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what they were essentially saying, stopping power of a 45... <sighs> Velocity of a nine millimeter. That's what they're saying. You know, you right. get the velocity and the stopping power. I don't know. That's true. That's where it, it was like the middle of the pack kind of thing. I saw a commercial once where it said I could haul a fully loaded, a fully loaded um, a semi filled full of freaking lumber like trees um, with my half ton Chevy pickup too. But I don't believe that. Hmm. So advertising, they'll tell you what they want. Get right. you to buy it. Well, you know what makes the rock and world go round? Fat bottom, Fat bottom girls. girls. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Anyhow, we are done, I think, for this evening, guys. We did good. Is there anything else we didn't? Uh, no, nah, I think I think we covered everything. We didn't leave anything out, did we? I want to just talk about one thing at the that shopping that was yeah, go for came it. out of Shot Show. Oh, oh, really quick. Oh, freaking shot. Are you and, getting fired? I don't know. Again? Did we already talk about the technology <laughs> part? No, we haven't talked uh, about anything on Shot okay. Show. I haven't so, even whined about Shot Show. This today. one thing that I saw. I, I'm due. I'm it due was for some whining. It was the slide. And it, yes, it was on a Glock. But there, <laughs> it was on a now, freaking now, Glock. Now the freaking Glock fanboys can't count. So they can't I look think down and find out their, their slide idea, is locked over. I think their Sorry. idea was to go on to all different types of guns. Uh, semi-autos. They brought it, it out on a Glock first. Good it's, figure. It's got like a digital screen on the back of the slide. So you know, just so, so d- d- like the, right here. The anatomy of, of the Glock is on the very back of the slide, there's a little plate that you right. can slide off. Right. That keeps so all the guts inside the this, striker fire mechanism. This is a counter. A round counter. It connects to an app on your freaking phone. Also you tells you out. if your mag is empty or if it's out. or. So instead of bang, 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 slide lock, oh, I'm out. Bang, bang, bang. Empty. Oh, yeah, it says I'm empty. <laughs> now, okay. Utterly ridiculous. I know. I don't True. I don't see the point in it, but I like that people are thinking to on how to put technology in it. The I'll, thing I'll I'm do. worried about is it's going to open up the door to more gun control. I look at it that way, too. But the way I look at it is it's making people lazy. That's true, too. It's making people. Oh, your gun jam. Oh, it says my gun's jammed. You don't know your damn gun's jammed. You don't know you're out because the slide blocked back. Bang, bang, bang. I have six rounds left. You don't know you still have freaking ammo in there? I mean, yeah. come yeah. on. True. It's, it's just I, capitalism I, at work. It's some guy making I'm a product. I'm just using it as an Try example, example unfortunately. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not getting on no, you about I, it. I'm just like I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you. I'm just, I like to see that there's technology going into it. Right. I just don't know if that's exactly what we need right now. I don't think it is. No. And I, I I really, I think it's gimmicky. And I don't, I think it they'll probably is. sell some because there's going to be some people out there that think it's freaking cool. Now, the target systems that you mount to your gun that tells you, you know, what you may have done wrong with your trigger system, that is. That helps you train. That helps you. Yes. That's a training tool. And I agree yes. with that. Um, but where you need to count, where it needs to count the rounds for you. That's stupid. You don't need, you don't need it. Go back to kindergarten. Yeah. Can learn to count. Anyway, uh, what, that's, what's, uh, what's the MSRP on something like that? You think? I have no clue. I mean, you're already. I mean, it, right now it's only for Glock. Oh, 
No, well, Paul bought it. He yeah, brought so up another good they, thing. so the Glocks. We have this. We have the the new Glock. It's got a what's what's different about it? It's got a threaded barrel. The new Glock? No Glock. Excuse me. Can high point. The new high point. I don't care about the damn new. By the way, I picked up a new Glock the other day and felt it. Piece of cheap crap. Piece of crap. It felt like a piece of cheap garbage. You got, got the forty three X in my hand. The forty three biggest which is... waste of money on the planet as far. My, well, that, wait, my wait. car, my K A H R nine millimeter felt better than, and you, you will, you admitted that it feels like it's, it does, but I think you're also cheap. upset that it kind of took a place of the PD ten. It didn't take, how did it take its place? The PD ten is not even out yet. It didn't take. It a took the place. idea of the PD ten and it Glock ran with it, and the you place. just this because your wife has the regular forty three, right? and you hate four, it. I hate yeah. the forty three. <laughs> no, is this thing a single stack? Is the, that what it is? Yes, it's a single stack nine, longer, but it's a t- it's a longer spring or longer the new, grip. The new ten rounds, nine millimeter. Yeah. The new stupid finish they got on the slide. Yeah. I don't like the Makes it look like a freaking all. gangbanger's gun. Right. It's You might as well make it. It would look better shiny chrome. Yeah. It, it, it feels cheap, and you were running the slide, and you felt it too. You it could just, feel it grinding. I mean, it, it doesn't was, it wasn't feel filled, good. It, it feel feels good. plasticky. It feels like a piece of crap. Um, You feel pieces of crap? I feel pieces of crap, and that's what it felt like. <laughs> you eat pieces of crap for breakfast? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it, I was Morgan, not, Morgan's gonna enjoy that one. Trust me. I was not. Imp- I was not impressed. Okay. So, um, but the high, high point, point. High point basically just put some little wrapping paper and a bow on their old gun. As I kind of. That's what. I, that's as far as what I see. It, they uh, they what? threaded the barrel. What? Right. They threaded the barrel. And tell them what the magazine. They, this cool. Okay, so the magazine is what they call a double single. It's a freaking Christmas tree. So yeah, so the bottom section of it's a double, but then it it like funnel or it necks down into a single. Why stack. does it do that? Because well, they're the still using the same old components from the old C nine. So pretty much high points. They just dressed it up. Is all they did. But you know what? That it's guy's the a same genius. Old gun. The guy's a genius. He's selling the holy living crap. No, here's the thing. They built this up. They did. Right? They built this up. They did build it. Build that it up. said High Point was coming out with. You even said it. You and Tarver were oh, talking yeah. about it. High Point was coming out with something new, right? The anticipation. Believe it or not, people were anticipating what they were going to come were. out with. And then that's what it was. I was severely disappointed. I would buy that over the forty three X. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I but will buy that over the 43 X. It's just the same gun, just just dolled up a little bit. They just put a little. Bow I could on put it. a suppressor on it that costs more than the gun. I'm super yeah, excited. serious. Yeah, I'm super excited about that. Between the stamp that. and the product, it's more than the gun. <laughs> I guess if you look at it in that respect, you know, you're not spending an outrageous amount. So, what other firearms yeah. came out as far as guns? I don't care about rifles. I, honestly, rifles I didn't crap. see anything like, you know revolutionary so i i don't know if they unveiled this at shot show or not it looks pretty interesting now i've never shot the gun so i'm not i'm not saying i'm a fanboy of it it looks really good though um the guns look really nice anyhow go online look up lion heart industries they came out with the lk9 something a few years back and i i think we've I've talked yeah. about it here before they've got this like build your own gun so you can go online and you can pick what slide you want and all the stuff and like put, i don't know how much it costs i need to go look at it it looks pretty interesting and their guns are really nice looking but you can put all all that you can just build your own gun and then it's like they build it to your specs and send it to you man that's really slick that's it, so smart. It is. It's. Um, I like that concept. I like yeah. that idea. Anyway. I'll find the link and I'll I'll post it on Facebook and I'll send it to you guys. It's actually pretty. I don't know how much they cost. I didn't get that far into it. It looks really interesting. Hmm. It looks. I really wish good. someone would do that. Well, I wish more people would do that because I'm I'm looking. You know, I'm a revolver guy, right? <laughs> I'm looking at all these revolvers and I'm I'm I want a larger caliber, <laughs> but I want you know. I want it to be six rounds in the... In the you want what you want. I want what I want, and I can't find it anywhere. No one makes this thing. I got to compromise here, there, and right. whatnot. You know, I want, a, I want a Smith trigger pull, but Smith doesn't make anything that's small enough to right. to make it concealable. And then, but, oh, Charter Arms, I can get one of Charter that's got a large caliber. Oh, and it's only got five rounds. Oh, okay. I'm, okay, I guess. I, I really want six rounds. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I want to. I, if I I can find something that's small, but it's going to have a four inch barrel. I don't want a four inch barrel. I want a two inch barrel, or, or you know, to conceal. But, yeah, I don't know. 
Dean wants to be the new son of Sam. Damn right. Yeah. He wants the uh, the forty four special my, charter arms. My dog has been talking to me, telling me. <laughs> Is that me, the gun? That's the gun that was used. Yeah. <laughs> I like the forty four special. Actually, for some reason, I'm like yeah. really into this serial serial killer thing. I'm like, I love reading about it, and yeah. Anyway, okay. Don't call me weird. I'm, I mean, it's just a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> These guys aren't mentors or anything. <laughs> No, <laughs> please, Todd, don't hold back your feelings. I, I, you didn't even hear them all. You did not even hear them all, Morgan. Uh, you, we, there was a palpable tension in the room. Yeah. My, my, my I haven't cut myself yet. My butthole puckered a little That's bit good. as I was looking at you playing with that knife. <laughs> he stares at me. He's the closer enti- to you. So he stares at me the entire podcast because I know you're waiting for blood over here, aren't you? No, I just, I feed <laughs> off of you, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly like doing stuff like this. I, I saw you grab the blade <laughs> itself and hold it and start doing this. Yeah, like that. Oh shit! Oh dear. Oh, Does gosh. this bother you? Did, he, you're, he, you're a freaking. You're. You're. What are you? You're I'm a physician a assistant. And I, I know, right? I, I, I have. Some? I have oh. a first aid kit in my. Uh, in my range bag. The problem is, is you guys would probably laugh at me <laughs> first. <laughs> we would. No, Let's I would. I that. would be the first person to say, "I told you so." Simple, quick. Pull up Instagram Live. <laughs> <laughs> hold that in front of the camera. <laughs> okay i think we're done here boys so i am yeah. I, it's been a long day yeah. uh, i've been up and at him since about five this morning so true i am i ate crap today and i can feel it i didn't eat crap <laughs> i ate like crap like, today he admits to it again it. oh my god the crap guy that does the guy that right. doesn't eat sugar and you're feeling it then form, you're eating it oh my gosh i had i had uh what are those cheese things on the tortillas quesadillas i had six Six quesadillas and four Cliff Bars. <laughs> he ate Cliff Bars like crazy today. Holy cow, you're going to need some Miralax, too. <laughs> need some Miralax, a rubber glove, and your index finger to get that going. <laughs> that or if you just want to put the index glove on a stick and go to town. <laughs> really? Cow, Todd, really that's what going? it took for you to drop the knife? <laughs> <laughs> a poop joke did it? <laughs> I was getting my index finger ready. <laughs> so, anyhow, I think we're out of here. Until then, we'll see you guys... Uh, Next week, thanks for listening. Share it with your friends. Hit the subscribe button, and we're going to let you go before uh, he passes out. I think he's going to. See you later. Bye. Bye.